Everyone, uh, welcome to the session. This is um, getting started with the force.com toolkit for .NET. My name is Jonathan Baltz. Uh, first, there is the safe harbor statement. Um, I'm not showing anything forward, forward looking or whatnot, so dis disregard whatever I say regarding the investments. But actually, it's my other job, so no. Um, <clears throat> my name is Jonathan Baltz, like I mentioned. I work for Ethereos. There's my Twitter handle. I'm certified, also a force.com MVP. Ethereos is a company that's uh, leading the Internet of Things um, revolution by connecting products and customers. Uh, if you want to get, learn more about them, they're actually over at the Internet of Things booth um, or area. And actually, there's also another booth at the Expo. So visit them if you can. <clears throat> So the agenda for day, today, um, introduction to the toolkit, why we did it, how we did it, what is it exactly, um, and then we're going to get into the accelerators and samples that were built for the toolkit itself. Uh, then demos, we're going to do a, a Windows Phone demo, a Windows 8 application, and then there's going to be time for our Q&A. So the force.com toolkit, what is it? Why did we build the toolkit? Uh, Wade Wagner, who formerly of Salesforce, currently of Microsoft, previously of Microsoft, previously of Salesforce, currently of Microsoft, uh, built the toolkit um, for different reasons. Uh, there's a large .NET developer ecosystem even within the Salesforce community. Um, there's actually a rumor that Exact Target uh, built a lot of its infrastructure and architecture on .NET. Um, and then with the Salesforce One platform APIs, um, there's a lot of APIs. And so one of, the, idea, one of the, the best ideas is to provide a lot of native connections to these APIs for different platforms. And so by doing so, this will simplify the development of Salesforce One applications and through that, we'll create a roadmap or a blueprint for coding best practices. So the idea around these toolkits were, is, it was more or less to simplify, um, simplify the development of, of .NET applications to get rid of the tedious and you know, busy work aspects of developing um, the applications and to get straight into the actually the, the the meat and potatoes of the application itself. Uh, an analogy I thought of was to, it's sort of like fast forwarding past the whole beginning of Star Wars, getting past the Jawas, and going straight to the cantina scenes. And so you can actually get into the actual important and exciting parts of, of, of Star Wars. Think of it that way. <clears throat> so different design principles behind the, the toolkits. Um, we wanted to make sure we wanted to make sure that you could actually create um, different applications through uh, that are on the .NET platform. So it'd be it's a Windows application, a web application, ASP.NET, or a Windows Phone application. And we did this through the use of portable class libraries. We wanted to make sure that it was, it was asynchronous development um, to ensure support for dynamics and generics. These first three, I'm going to get into more detail on the next slide, but so. Hold on to that. Um, but from a more wider standpoint, we wanted to make sure that the, the toolkits were simple enough to, for the beginner or to learn more about the connection between .NET and Salesforce, but extensible enough that if you had an advanced um, scenario, you could actually use them as a building block or as the step off point to create them. Um, we wanted to make sure that they were delivered through NuGet. Um, NuGet, for those who don't know, uh, is the package manager for Force.com, or for not Force.com, the package manager for .NET through Visual Studio. Um, <clears throat> so if you, you're familiar with Rails or Ruby, it's a Ru it's Ruby Gems for .NET or NPM for Node developers for .NET. And then finally, make sure that it was open source. Wade didn't want to do this on his own. Um, <clears throat> he wanted to make sure, you know, see who, if anyone else had ideas and to make it open source and available through, uh, through GitHub. It's currently available. Uh, Wade is still the prime you know, developer for the, <clears throat> the, 
the project. But if you have any ideas, if you just look at the toolkit, have any ideas, he takes ideas, he actually implements a lot of them um, himself or will take actual um, pushes, or I forgot the term, from GitHub into the application or into the project. <clears throat> so the design principles in .NET that were used were portable class libraries. So portable class libraries are, you know, or PCLs, enable you to write .NET assemblies, uh, a create a project that creates a .NET assembly, and you have the ability the, to use that assembly and reference it in different projects um, in like a Windows phone or Windows a Windows 8 application and just reference that project instead of rewriting code over and over again for multiple projects. <clears throat> and so if you want to write your, you know, the idea is to use the shared, your shared functionality, your business logic in this one portable class library and through that use, um, reference that project in the different applications on the .NET, .NET framework. <clears throat> Another idea was to use the, the recently introduced uh, a wait and a sync keywords for asynchronous development in .NET. Um, <clears throat> you know, the idea was that these were gonna be mobile apps, Salesforce One's a mobile framework, and these applications were gonna be mobile so you can get past the bottlenecks or the, um, <clears throat> the, the lower, or, you know, that could enhance the responsiveness of the application itself. And then the, finally, something that's very interesting about .NET and, or migrating from Salesforce to .NET um, is that C Sharp itself is a statically typed language. <clears throat> um, so there's no real type variance there. But it allows for two things, that dynamics and generics. Dy dy dynamics, um, the best way to put it, dynamics, it's hard to, you know, I put it up there, it's static type when the type is not known until runtime. So, but a better explanation I wrote down. It allows for certain um, operations to bypass the type, the type uh, compliance at compile time and, in, and then ensure the, um, the, type, the type differences are, are resolved when the application is actually running. And the generics is actually kind of more, uh, more interesting. It allows for type variance. So when you're, you write a class or a method and you have a return, a return type, you can actually use a, you know, a type T, um, which is a, um, a generic type. And then when the actual class or method is being called, it's not until that time that the type has to be actually resolved. <clears throat> so through this, through these two, Two, two tools in, in, in .NET, C Sharp, um, it actually helps the development of the applications uh, built on, on the force.com toolkit. <clears throat> the components of the toolkits, um, there's a force.com, uh, force, it's actually built on the REST APIs. So the, the overall force.com toolkit and a chair toolkit, um, both of them use a similar or a common library that just overall looks at the, <clears throat> the shared functionalities of both REST, REST APIs, the NuGet packages, the sample applications, and the accelerators. All of these packages, or all these components are in the one GitHub project um, on GitHub. <clears throat> and so these, there are sample applications and accelerators. The sample applications are the web ASP.NET application, a Windows 8.1 application, a phone, and a console app. Um, a console app. Uh, earlier this morning, Steve Lasker showed examples of the web and the console applications. I'm gonna get into the Windows 8 and the Windows Phone applications. And by doing so, I'm actually, oh, sorry. I'm actually going to use the accelerators. There's an 8.1, the 8, a Windows 8.1 accelerator and a phone accelerator. And we're gonna get into that in the demos, which I have here. And I'll show you how to implement the demos and create a, the beginning of an application, a bare bones application, with the tool, using the toolkits and the accelerators. So we're gonna actually get into the coding demos right here. So the first demo I'm gonna get into is a phone application. Oh, sorry, let me. 
change screens. I don't. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Not yet, though. I, can, I cannot find my mouse. There it is. There we go. Okay, so right here, um, I am actually in. I am actually in Visual Studio 2013 Ultimate Edition. Ultimate Edition is through an MSDN account. Um, I have it through the my MSDN subscription. But what, everything I show you here is actually available in um, what Microsoft offers as the Visual Studio Express Editions. So if you go to the Express Edition for the phone or Expr Express, Express Edition for, for Windows, they're free downloads of Visual Studio so you can actually create Visual, Visual Studio or .NET applications for free using the, using Visual Studio. <clears throat> so what I did here is I actually I'm going to show you how I what I did, and so I did a new project, and I created a Windows Phone application, a Windows Phone app. There are two apps or two types of Windows Phone apps, and up here you have a universal app which is was uh, introduced in .NET, which actually is a application written that actually you can actually use in Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8 without actually writing two different applications. Um, for the phone apps, they have a Windows Phone Store or Windows Phone application and a Windows Phone Silverlight application. For the accelerators, you want to make sure that you use a Windows Phone Silverlight application and create the application that way. I want to cancel out of here. So when you, you first build the, or first open a new application, it has a bunch of code for you, and it gives you the code here. Um, and then through NuGet, which is a tool, that's not tools, tools, NuGet package manager, NuGet package, uh, add, or manage NuGet packages for solution, um, this will present a um, list of NuGet packages that were contrib contributed through the community and allows for um, easy, easy implementation of different packages and different functions within Salesforce or within .NET. And to add a, a, a package, you have to search for developer force, which I have here, and let's search for it. And all you have to do is to find the application or the package you're looking for, Windows Phone login. Sorry. Um. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm looking for the Windows Phone 8 login and I'm installing it. And so by just installing it, it confirms if I, I want to add this package, hit OK, and it starts adding the package and its dependencies. Um, some of them might have licenses that you have to approve and you accept the, the licenses and it just installs the packages and, the, um, and the, any dependencies that that package might have. And in doing so, it will add references here as it's adding the package. So I'm going to close this. <clears throat> and so once it was added, I am going to, it adds a bunch of, uh, of references and as well as assets. Okay, I had a problem there. I'm going to add it again because I don't know what happened. Oh, it didn't add the, the Salesforce app. So NuGet, that's why. Now let's search. Okay, well, you know, since that doesn't work, there's also a console version of NuGet, and so I'm going to install it that way for now. So, um, install package, 
developer force. Phone eight dot login enter. There you go. And so it opens up. Uh, it, and, um, he set something up where it, it'll actually give the more information about the accelerators when you actually add the package. I want to close them. And so when I have the I added the accelerators and it adds the, depend, the, the, the reference of packages. It also creates different assets for me. So it created a pages, different pages here, including a login page. Um, and so in order to tell the phone to navigate straight to the, to the login page, I need to update the manifest for, um, which if you created, I believe it's, Android has a manifest. So it's the same idea with the Windows Phone. Um, and so instead of t telling the, the application to go to main page, I tell it to go to uh, pages, login page. I cannot see that. So I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to just build and run the application. Build succeeded, and I'm going to start running the application. And this is. Oh, here it is. There. Okay, so this is loading. Um, in the for courtesy, of, for time courtesy, I'm going to actually bypass the showing the example of the phone. The phone's going to take a while to load, so I'm going to stop the build or the the preview of this and go straight back into the Windows application. Oh, actually, hey, look at that. It worked much quicker. <clears throat> so it's, oh, it's going to error because one thing I forgot to do. I forgot to, okay. I forgot to mention one last thing. So the idea behind the, 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 the toolkits is you're actually, build, you're actually building um, a connected app in Salesforce. And so what I did here is I already pre-built, what is going on here? Um, so if you're not um, familiar with connected apps, um, I actually have a link at the end of the, the, uh, the presentation that gives more information about connected apps. But you create it through doing a create app, create app, set up create apps, and this will actually create a connected app so you can reference the, the Salesforce information or Salesforce org through um, OAuth and different, auth, um, different authentication uh, protocols. Okay. So I actually have something set up for it, so I'm going to go straight to that. So phone application. So the one thing I did miss, is I can't see that. I apologize. I'm going to have to mirror my screens. Much better here. So, <clears throat> so 
So one thing I, need, I missed and I didn't uh, actually do is I didn't go into the manifest. No, not the manifest. The login page CS file, and I didn't add the consumer key. So through the accelerator, it actually builds up. The idea through of the accelerator is actually to get through the whole OAuth functionality without writing any code. And so I'm going to paste my consumer key here. If it's saved, it did not. Oh, there you go. And I'm going to save this. And now I'm going to build the, the project. Build succeeded, and now I'm going to run the application. So what it's going to do here, go to the, open the page, go to the authentication. I'm going to log in. Hopefully that works, and that does. It's the normal OAuth um, protocol or, or process that you've been re you've rec you might probably recognize um, if you've done other connected applications. Uh, it should show me uh, something that says if I want to uh, accept or deny. It's not. Um, <clears throat> but at this point, that's actually all you have to do. Oh, there you go. I'm going to allow it. And what this is doing now, it's actually bringing me to the main page of the phone application. Since we haven't done anything with the main page, it's, it, I'm connected to the org, but I'm not showing anything because I haven't done that. I'm actually going to stop this, and I'll show you how to move forward using the account sample through creating, a, um, creating the Windows 8 application. <clears throat> so I going to create a new Windows, a new project, Windows apps, blank app, name it whatever you want to name it, and hit OK. It's going to do the same thing it did with the phone application, which is provide a simple template for a Windows 8 application. <clears throat> and through the same functionality of the, using the NuGet packages, I'm going to create, uh, add the NuGet package the same way, Hopefully this time, I don't. I was planning on showing you the console ver, you know, a way process here, but I'll show you the UI pro, um, process if it finds it. Um, and I'm actually while we're talking, while we're waiting for this, I'll tell you something about um, with Salesforce development or .NET development in order to. Create applications. You don't have to. You can register. You don't have to register uh, th through Microsoft. But once you wanted to publish your applications to one of the stores, either the Windows Store or the Windows Phone Store, you have to register with Microsoft. It costs $19 to for a person, an uh, individual, to publish to either store. So it's $19 flat fee for a lifetime membership. So it's a one-time fee, and you can actually publish free applications, pay for applications um, in either store. I'm, no, I'm going to actually see if it works through here. Actually. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, fantastic. <clears throat> it's unreachable for some reason. Well, it's just, I, so this is actually actually grabbing the the package through the source, uh, the, the cache that I have saved on my application or my on my, my machine. Um, right now it's actually trying to load, I must have lost the connections of the internet. Um, it's trying to load the, the same web pages from Wade Wagner's uh, website right now. I'm gonna close them and go straight to here. So the architecture of a Windows 8 application is similar to what it is for the phone. With slight differences, there's no manifest app, um, package or page, for example. Um, and if you can see right here in the Solution Explorer, it's added um, other uh, elements or other um, components, files, to the solution. Uh, one of them is called main page underscore salesforce.com. Uh, dot, dot and here is where you actually are adding your consumer key. I'm going to run over and grab a different consumer key because I created a different connected app for Windows 8 ver versus the phone. <coughs> yep, server not found. <coughs> Save that and then go into main page. So this is the main page. So when you, when you open the application, it comes to this page. And all it does for you, it says this initialize component, meaning initialize the, this main page and get it ready. Um, I have to add some code here. But it says by, by, when this is loaded, run. <laughs> yep. This main, pa main page loaded uh, method which is this is I'm going to this is where the async comes into play. So this is going to be a private method that's async asynchronous. And what this does is it calls another method in that other CS file that was there. which I forgot the name, so I'll just go right back to it, which is right here. Um, <laughs> it's not there. Oh, get access token. So this, this right here, this, this method right here in the, the added file is actually, this, this is doing all of, the, getting the access token, the refresh token, and the instance URL for your Salesforce org, and using that, once you log in, using those those variables or those yeah those variables to create your force client in order to call you know talk to the Salesforce org within .NET, and this is all done behind the scenes and simply by just adding your consumer key. It's the only thing you need to do once the uh, the toolkit it, the package is installed. So it's get access token. So. Doo -doo -doo. and save. And I am going to put this on my local machine, so hopefully I don't have to, that's going to have to go to the internet. <coughs> and so there's no, no emulator. I'm running this, since I'm running Windows 8, I can actually run applications that I create on my machine. <coughs> it's gonna bring a splash page, tell me I'm connecting to a service, can't connect to the service because I don't have the access to the internet right now. <clears throat> so I'm gonna stop that right here and I'm gonna hopefully, by the time I add the, the sample accounts page, have access to the internet. <clears throat> so those two login packages were the accelerators, but there's also an, another package that is called samples accounts, samples accounts. And what this is is just giving you an example of how to create a page that calls the account, you know, that creates a model for, of the accounts and puts in the code that has you list the accounts and the descriptions for each account or for, for the org itself. So by going, through, by going through the same functionality of grabbing the, the, the NuGet package, <coughs> um, it'd be Windows 8.samples 
that accounts. So what this is doing is adding a, another page <coughs> to the, the solution as well as a models directory with a accounts model class. And what this is doing is creating the accounts object for, within the .NET project and right now it's, start, it's a, start, you know, a starter. It's giving you the three, the three uh, fields tied to the account object um, within this, this class. <clears throat> and so here I am, I've logged into the application on the, the main page. So right here it's doing the await of getting the access token. But when it get, once it gets the access token, instead of just staying there, I wanted to actually do something. And so I want to go to this, that frame, that navigate. Of, type of pages, right? So what I'm telling here is do is okay. Once that's at, once that's done, navigate the frame to this this um, XAML page. Yeah. Why is it not working? Yeah. It is a string. No, it's not, it's not in quotes. Maybe, maybe. No, it's not. Oh, because this, right? <laughs> I wrote it down, so I have it. This frame there, we have to type of page. Yeah, and that's right. Type of. Oh, there is no slash. You're right. Sorry, whoever said that, the idea of the, the slash got me. And still, there's no. Why not? Maybe. <gasps> yes, that was right. There you go. Then what? I'm gonna... Pages. It's 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 actually trying to get to this this XAML page right here, and so that's why I'm trying to under, understand why it's not. It didn't. You could be right. <laughs> Still not getting it. <clears throat> hmm. Type of pages that account page. I have no idea why this. Yeah, that's not right. <clears throat> if I take pages out, you know, I'm going to. Uh, I know. I think I know why. It's no, that's not right either. It's pages. Okay, let's try the entire thing over. Navigate, nav. Type of pages dot accounts page.
Yep, I'm in there. It's still not finding it. That is crazy. I actually did this entire thing earlier. I am going to try that right now. <clears throat> Build succeeded, so yeah, that was ridiculous. <clears throat> so going back, to, okay, and connect, connect to the service. I'm going to escape, get back to here. I'm going to stop. I'm going to try to connect to the service or the internet and see what's going on there. Limited, fantastic. Okay, what this does is that. Like the phone application, it, instead of bringing up a blank page, it brings up a list of the names of the accounts that are in this org, which I can't show you because I can't get to the internet, which is in the org that I connected to, and then a list of the names and a list of the descriptions, and all, there's nothing that it does because all, I had the, all the sample application does is show just a list of the names and applications. Um, I actually have a, se a session tomorrow at 1 where I'm doing this entire thing over. Um, so if you want to come to the community theater at 1, I'll be there. We have three minutes left. Questions, I'm open. I apologize for not being able to connect to the internet. But if you have questions, let me know. And oh, sorry, I have, actually have the end of the presentation, which is ridiculous. So I have, and this, um, on this, <clears throat> so when this is, this presentation is available, I can make it available um, with, through the, Dream, uh, the Dreamforce application or app. Uh, there's references for the toolkit through Wade's page, how to create a connected app, the GitHub repository, and then, pictures, got it. There's another one. <clears throat> Here's a bunch of other stuff. More stuff about Windows developments, App Studio, BizSpark is sort of like startup Salesforce for startups, but for a .NET and DreamSpark. If you have kids that are students, they actually can actually get the .NET stuff or the Visual Studio stuff for free as well. Question. See, nothing's working. Whoa, oh, yeah, hello. I have, I have a question. So today I use the partner WSDL and I just attach it as a reference. I'd like to use these libraries so I don't have to do all that. Yes. But the problem is, is my application is accessing many different uh, environments. So I don't have the ability to go and put a connected app in every oh, single okay. org yes. because we're writing it more for like a, uh, as a partner. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know how you would do that? No, I do not. I, and this is really just set up for a connected app, like, so how do you access the multiple environments, like, is the, through, all, um, what, what protocol, authentication protocol? Well, today I don't know how to do it with OAuth. <laughs> I have to just use it with SOAP, and with SOAP you just add the partner WSDL, Good point. and you just pass in username, password, token, and it works. Yeah, I don't know, like, this is using OAuth, and it uses OAuth as an, uh, the authentication, and the REST toolkits, so I don't know how you would do what you're trying to get done. I believe it's possible because Excel Enabler does it if anybody's ever used that. So no, I just no. got to figure it out. Yeah. Sorry about that. Anybody else? That is the last slide I have, and that is the presentation. Again, I apologize for not being able to connect. It, it, it would have been awesome if it did connect, let me tell you. Thank you very much. <laughs>